This is a short one like me. Dudes with Bruges on a Porch presents Michael Bruges. Dude. Craft Bruges and Casual Conversations, once again, the guest that keeps on guesting. His name is Goff. He's from Beer Nuts Production here to talk about his latest film, The Kidnapping. What's up? Hey, how you doing, Drew? Good to uh, good to speak to you after obviously your uh, five year uh, anniversary celebrations. Obviously, I sent you some very kind hearted messages, as did <laughs> my uh, my crew, uh, cast rather from uh, the latest film. They also uh, said g'day and uh, sent you some nice messages. So, uh, uh, congratulations again on your oh, five years. Yeah, thanks, and I appreciate you uh, including. Uh... Uh, some of the, the the local talent that you have going on. I, I I peeped to their IMDb's and I was impressed by some of them. I was like, oh, they're in some cool stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, hey, listen, how dare you think that I don't mix with the highest of high <laughs> talent? I only have the best. I agree. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I no, I was just curious to see what else what else I could see about it. Um, <laughs> I looked at your IMDb too. Oh, did you? Yeah, I hope I, you were like, suitably impressed. Oh, of course. Yeah, I mean, I've seen I've seen a lot of the stuff, so it's like, wow, I know this guy. He's on the internet and <laughs> IMDb. He's got the stuff, and I've discussed things <laughs> with got... him. That's right, man. If there's one thing you can say about Goff at, B- at Beer Nuts Production, it is he has stuff. Yeah, good stuff. Good stuff, I would say. And uh, uh, the kidnapping is a, is a part of that as well. Um, I did enjoy it. It's a little different uh, than what you normally, I guess you could say you normally do, a different take on things. Um, so uh, talk about it a little bit. Where did this come from and kind of what was your, your process with it? Yeah, absolutely. So, yes, yeah, so uh, this is my version of a romantic comedy. It's about as good as I could do for a romance sort of film because, I got a a good friend of mine has been uh, badgering me, uh, and she's been saying to me for ages, you know, Goff, your stuff's really funny and, and all that, but I'm a girl. You got to do something for the ladies, do a nice romance. So I finally relented, and this is my version of a romance. As you said, it's called the kidnapping. It goes for twenty two minutes. It's a comedy because that's my sort of jam. So it is a comedy piece, and uh, essentially, uh, Maddie is. I, I, I'm the kidnapper, and I kidnap Maddie. And then uh, we, we sort of discover that uh, maybe she's uh, a bit more of the uh, the dominant type that I uh, didn't understand. And uh, she sort of takes over the situation and uh, the ransom might be coming from uh, elsewhere than we had originally planned. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed it and it had a lot, a lot of laughs. I noticed a lot more F-bombs in this one, uh, a lot more <laughs> different uh, different types of language or dialogue than you, that you try to do. Uh, my first real question, though, is... Uh, did you go method on this? Did you uh, did you experience what it's really like to kidnap somebody? Yes, of course. I kidnapped Courtney. You saw the film, you know. Uh, I told Courtney that uh, we're going to be going full method, as you said, and uh, <laughs> she'll have to be tied to that chair for at least a week before we film. Well, for being tied to a chair for a week, she did a, a pretty good job. Looked pretty fresh still, so that's good. <laughs> well, it's amazing what makeup can do, you know. I got the makeup <laughs> artist in. We freshened her up and... Uh, you know, it was all good. i got to say, credit where credit's due, because, I mean, uh, Courtney Varley, who plays Maddie, uh, did most of the heavy lifting in that film, and she was absolutely sensational. I mean, we rehearsed a lot, uh, as you know, because obviously we sent you those uh, messages for your five-year reunion show uh, during one of our rehearsals, and that was a good uh, six weeks ago. So, um, yeah, so uh, we had, uh, we'd been rehearsing a lot, because obviously... There's a lot of dialogue. It's a lot of back and forth. I, I sort of told the actors at the start they need to think of it like a stage play because that's going to be the best way to kind of uh, uh, think about it uh, in regards to how it's going to play out. So, uh, yeah, it, it was a little bit different to what I usually do, but I, I'm really happy with it. I think it turned out really cool. Yeah, I agree. And then with uh, only having three people in the film or on camera, uh did you intend is that how you wrote it or did you have other ideas that you scrapped or how did that uh, come about is it easier to write for three people than it is for say you know 10 no no it's a lot harder because there's you don't have the same uh scope of you know well this character can come in and say this funny thing and then leave and then that guy can do this and so no it uh, it is a lot harder to write for just uh, a couple of people but no that was the intention all along was to just have the uh the three people involved so uh yeah that that was the original plan 
Uh, that's how uh, I wrote it. Well, originally when I started, it was just, I thought maybe I could just do it as a two-person thing, but then I realised uh, a few minutes in that that just wasn't going to work and that we needed a, a third person. So uh, that's what we did. But um, yeah, I was. Uh, uh, it was a lot more rehearsing too because obviously when you've got more people, they've got less lines. So while there's more uh, people to, to handle and to deal with, uh, it's a lot easier to rehearse them because they've only got a few lines of dialogue. So once, you know, you say, can you say that properly? You can. Okay, good. Now piss off. I'll get the next person in. But with this one, you've got to sort of keep uh, going through it and getting it right and pumping it out. Because again, like it's a three angle, uh, three camera setup. So we shot it all in one go type of a situation. So that again means that we have to get it right or there'll be uh, problems. When you're writing something like this, do you have a specific like page count that you want to hit or is, uh, do you just kind of go with how you know, go with the flow of it and see how it how it blends together before you add or take things out? Yeah, so uh, you should do as you suggested, have uh, you know a page count in mind and do a proper treatment and have your bullet points of what marks do you want to hit throughout the script and how the plot line's going to go. But I did none of that with this. I just uh, sat at the computer and uh, I had the idea that I wanted to do a bit of a, a, a funny romance sort of a thing. And like I say, I, I genuinely, this is genuinely my idea of a romance film. It's as good as I could do for that genre. So uh, even though it's probably not overly romantic, but it's as good as I can do. But um, so that was sort of my brief in my head. And then, yeah, I just wrote it. And then when the first act was finished, it was finished. And then I did the next two acts because uh, there's obviously three sort of main acts in the whole thing. And uh, yeah, it just turned out how it turned out. So there was no... Uh, rules in regards to it needs to be a certain length or I wanted this sort of a page count or this particular thing is going to happen. It was just, uh, as I was writing it, it was just sort of, as you say, going with the flow. Did you study any uh, rom-coms before writing it? Did you watch, uh, I don't even know what a good rom-com is these days. It's been a bit of a minute <laughs> since I've watched one. Maybe forgetting Sarah Marshall, I guess it's a romantic comedy. That's my favorite one probably. Actually, that's a that's a really solid film. I like that's a good uh, good call. I like that film a lot. I actually I actually don't mind them. Um, uh, I, I, the English do them pretty well. You know, Love Actually and that kind of stuff is very good. And the English do it really well. But also, yeah, I don't mind if, as long as it's funny. Yeah. A good romantic film, as long as there's some humor in there, I'm happy to go along and enjoy the ride. You know what's going to happen, but that's okay as long as the journey is fun. Like forgetting Sarah Marshall, you know, you kind of know what's going to happen. But the journey to get to the end point is really hilarious. So you're happy to go along. And they're one of those things too, romantic comedies, where you can sort of go along and switch off your brain and just enjoy the the fun and the ride of it all. There's nothing really to think about. It's just two hours of fun to forget your problems and have a good time. So I actually don't mind the genre as a whole, to be quite honest. Uh, I didn't have any specific romantic comedies in mind when I was writing it, but... Um, yeah, I don't mind the genre. It's just, it's uh, as you know, because you've seen quite a bit of my stuff, it's not really the stuff that I kind of write usually. So it, uh, that presented its own little challenge, which I was happy for. I was I, I like the fact of uh, embracing a bit of a challenge. When uh, Donna kept at me for writing a romance, I thought, well, you know what? Why don't I give it a go? So I did. So, you know, why not? I, you know, I guess like thinking about it now, you could consider probably most uh, Adam Sandler movies rom-coms and then, you know, you, you, you watch, I watched a lot of Adam Sandler movies and then one day I'm watching Uncut Gems and I was like, oh, there's nothing romantic about this at all. No, Uncut, yeah, no, well, you're quite right. You, you got The Wedding Singer and Fifty First Dates, which are really good films. They're very funny films. And Uncut Gems, that's uh, completely on the other side of the spectrum and uh, a very good film as well. I really, when, I, uh, I don't want to spoil it for anybody who hasn't watched it, but uh, the last 45 minutes of that film, when it really starts ramping up and goes to a whole other level, gee, it's a good movie. I really That's when you sort of go, holy shit, and it really turns good. Yeah, I, I watched that movie pretty early in the morning one day. I just couldn't sleep, so then I watched it, and uh, I liked it, but it just was like, sometimes there's just like eight people talking at one time for like a long time, and I was like, what the fuck? Like, this is just too scattered for me a little bit. Maybe it was too early, but uh, the ending was uh, unexpected. 
Yeah, I really like the ending. Like I say, the last it, it's a heavy watch, so you got to sort of be in the mood for it because it is a heavy watch. But the last forty five minutes, when it kicks off, it just uh, like they they put the uh, the gears into overdrive and it just goes to another level and it uh, it really goes well. I I like how that film uh, ramps up. The first hour is a heavy watch, but then it really really kicks up. It's it's uh, very cool. Um, I did notice that uh, you had some more camera angles going back to your film. Um, was that intentional? Is that something you wanted to experiment with? Cause a lot of times, you know, you had the, you know, you had the, 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 I guess you could say head on shots. Um, when, like when, when you and Maddie are sitting down, but then a lot of times you would go to like that side angle either briefly or for a little more time. I just kind of noticed some, uh, uh, creative, uh, I guess, uh, differences than some of your other films. Is that, uh, something you wanted to kind of, hanker with or or what was your thought process with that yeah absolutely so yes uh you're quite right usually i stick to a very stock standard way of filming things uh because it's not uh, for any other reason than i like shooting things like that so um uh but with this one uh because it is in the same location uh most of the film is in the same location and it's a uh, very uh because you've got the girl tied to the chair obviously and I'm sort of standing above her it, uh, to have the one angle would be really bad. So I needed to come up with a few other creative uh, uh, angles and shot types, which is what I did. So I'm a huge fan of Breaking Bad and I really enjoyed the way that was shot because it was always very interesting. There was always, it wasn't very uh, commercial at all the way that was shot. You know, the angles were always very unique and different and I really liked that. So uh, this was sort of my attempt at doing something a little bit along those lines, getting a few more sort of unique angles of, of shots. And we've got the three cameras that we can play with. So I, I said to Scott, you know, if one looks crap, it's not really the end of the world because we don't have to use it a lot, you know. And there's a few other cutaways and stuff that we did as well. So, yeah, it looks a little bit different as well to my usual uh, – films but i think it works so yeah it's cool yeah absolutely i thought i thought it worked well and uh, you were able to make the make the cuts you know appropriate where it wasn't like too too crazy but still enough where it made a, like a, a difference in uh in a good way so i thought that was uh that was, that was pretty cool so three cameras you're you're working with well so then when like you're writing this or do you do storyboards ever do you kind of like pan out the shots or do you're like oh i think it'll look good here and this camera here, how, do, how does that work? I don't, I, yeah, I don't storyboard because obviously not being able to see so crash hot drawings oh, right. not really my skill. But um, I do type it out. So uh, I have a, a shot list and I'll say, you know, for example, you know, medium wide floor height looking up at the character and, and uh, a little description of what I'm after. And I give that all to Scott a week or so before the shoot. And I also will sit down with him and walk him through it as well. And then so on the day, he's got a fair idea of what I want. And we can always tweak something if we need to. But yeah, I type it all up. I'm very thorough in that uh, uh, particular angle. I, I always, uh, I'm big on lists. I make lists about everything. So when I'm doing any film, uh, the shot list is always typed up very clearly uh, to the point of, you know, what sort of sound, whether we're using a boom microphone, radio microphones, where they'll go. Uh, also, yeah, the camera, the angle, the whether it's a locked off shot or whether it's a tracking shot, all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, everything is done and typed out well in advance. But, yeah, always in sort of list format. Nice. And, you know, you brought up a, a not being able to see well. I, I thought it was, you know, I thought it was comical, but also um, cool that you included that in the film as well. You, uh, in a sense, you were playing like the, the kidnapped version of Goff. The <laughs> yeah, well, that that is that is true. A, a friend of mine who watched the film is like, uh, "You, uh, you just that's just how you would act if you kidnap somebody. That's not acting. That's just you being you." But um, uh, yes, uh, it also occurred to me about two or three pages into writing it that if I'm going to be the kidnapper, uh, I can't avoid not talking about my disability because it's going to be really obvious. So it needs to be spoken about. So yes, that became a part of the story as well. So again, gives it a bit of a touch of difference as well. So yeah, that, that's just something that, you know, had to happen, I suppose. What's your, what's your favorite part of making a film? Do you like the writing or do you like the acting more? 
Uh, that's a really good question. I kind of like it all for different reasons. I love writing it, and uh, but then uh, I can't wait after I finish writing it. You know, I can't wait to make it. I enjoy casting it and getting the actors. I love rehearsing it and seeing it sort of come alive. And then I really enjoy shooting it and again seeing it all come alive. Editing uh, can be a touch on the frustrating side because I, at that point I just want to get it done. So I'm I'm annoying. Uh, because uh, like I sit there with Scott and I tell him what I want and uh, he never goes fast enough for my liking, which uh, <laughs> would, I mean, he's doing like a great job. He's doing what I'm asking him to do. I'm like, okay, come on, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. You know, but um, uh, I'm like a, a kid with ADHD, I think. And, um, and then, yeah, yeah. Once uh, I give it to the website guy and it's up on the website. So I, I just get really excited about each and every process in, in their own sort of unique way. I just love, getting it done yeah once the script is written i can't wait for it to get made you know so yeah i mean you have a pretty quick uh turnaround when it comes to when it comes to films i feel like you're you really um grind it out and, and get it done in a pretty uh good amount of time um you ever take a break you gonna you gonna take a breather ever well I was, uh, yeah at some point i suppose i'll uh, run out of energy but uh at the moment uh, we're going okay i did actually have uh after this film got released i uh, celebrated uh, with a uh, weekend down in melbourne and uh, got on the beers and whatnot down in melbourne for uh, three days so uh, that was good times uh but um yeah no, it's been a long time man since i've gone on like a holiday holiday has been a, a long time but i guess uh, three days of uh, drunken disorderly behavior around the <laughs> great city of melbourne sort of counts yeah i guess i guess <laughs> Never been to Melbourne, so, but yeah, no. maybe someday. Yeah, no, it's, it's, a, it's a cool city, Melbourne. I really enjoy it. I used to work down there a lot. Back when I used to do stand-up comedy in the early 2000s, uh, Melbourne's kind of the, uh, well, I mean, they've got the Melbourne International Comedy Festival, but the rest of the year, it is kind of the hub for Australian sport and Australian entertainment. So if you want to see any kind of major sporting event, you go to Melbourne. And if you want to see any kind of major entertainment event, you go to Melbourne. So Melbourne's kind of where it's at for sort of sport and culture and arts and all that sort of stuff. And also uh, in regards to what you love the most, uh, your, your breweries and stuff, like all of that sort of craft breweries and all that sort of stuff has popped up all over regional Victoria. So yeah, Victoria is a big place for sort of, you know, the just uh, having a good time, you know, it's not a, stressed out kind of city at all it's a very cool cool place so i got some friends that moved down there so uh after i did the film uh i organized some football tickets and we went down to melbourne and we uh saw the football and uh two at the mcg as well and then uh had the saturday we were on the beers from about 11 o'clock in the morning uh all the way through so yeah it was uh it was good times we had a, a good three days so i guess that uh that's about as much of a holiday as I've had in a long time, actually. So, but you know, I'm cool with that. I, I really look at the end of the day, I love what I do for a job. I love making my films. I love uh, being nuts productions and all the work that I, I pump out. It's uh, I, I, I really enjoy it. It's, I don't really want to take a break to be honest. Yeah. Well, that's good. That's a good life then. There was a, there was a big, you call it football. We call it soccer here in America. Um, but uh, there was a big, soccer match at uh one of the uh nfl stadiums well the only nfl stadium in wisconsin not that long ago i couldn't tell you who played but it was a big deal people really liked it um well well yeah so when i was talking football i'm talking australian rules football so not soccer oh. so yeah because we call soccer soccer as well it's, oh you do uh, but um yeah yeah so but uh, australian rules football which uh, okay. uh some people refer to it very unkindly as aerial ping pong uh <laughs> Because uh, there's uh, very few rules. It's pretty much just there's the ball. There is no padding. Uh, kick it uh, through those big two sticks and uh, tackle and belt each other in the process. Is it kind of like rugby? No, no, no. It's better than rugby. Because okay. uh, uh, I, I get... <laughs> So when I was in Canada, this is a, a, a funny story. When I was in Canada, um, the AFL, the Australian Rules Grand Final, was on and my team, the Brisbane Lions, were in the grand final, the Super Bowl of the, the AFL sure. of that year. So I went to uh, the local pub that was on the corner of the street of where I was staying because I was living at a backpackers in Edmonton. And so I go up to the uh, the, the owner of the pub and I said, um, 
uh, I wasn't at all, uh, but I lied. And I said, I'm working at the backpackers just down the street there. Uh, if you put the, because as it turned out, two in the afternoon, Melbourne time is 9 p.m. Friday night, like the previous Friday night, right. Edmonton time. So it actually worked out really well. So I said, if you put the AFL grand final on the big screens, I'll get everybody from the backpackers to come down. We'll pack out your pub. And so they said, yeah, absolutely. So I put signs up. It was true to my word. I put signs up and we did. We got a good crowd to go down there. So my Canadian mate, uh, he and I sit down ready to watch the game. And just before the opening uh, bounce of the ball, uh, our full forward, Alistair Lynch, this is back in 2004. You can actually YouTube it. He went a little bit berserk because uh, he knew he was going to retire. And he went a bit berserk and started a fist fight uh, with uh, one of the uh, the Port Adelaide fullbacks. And it's uh, <laughs> he ended up getting a 10-week suspension. But um, <laughs> uh, but he was retiring, so he didn't care. But um, my mate turns to me, because obviously I'm in Canada and they love their hockey. And so my mate turns to me and he says, oh, this is a great game. I said, it hasn't even started yet. He says, I oh, know, but it's going to be fantastic, isn't it? So... <laughs> You know, so he was a Chris was a fan straight from the get go. But look, it's a great game, Australian rules football. It's a, if a, it's a hard, tough, very physical game, uh, and it's a great game to watch live, actually. So yeah, we went to the MCG and we saw uh, Brisbane play Richmond at the MCG. Sadly, we lost by a point, so it was a very exciting game, but uh, uh, not the right result. But I was sitting right next door to the Richmond cheer squad. So I had 40,000 Richmond fans singing the song. Uh, so it was actually a wonderful atmosphere. So in a funny way, I kind of didn't mind that we lost because the atmosphere was so great with all the Richmond supporters going crazy that uh, it, it made for a wonderful day anyway. That sounds awesome. I'll have to, I will have to YouTube then, check it out a little bit. I'm a big NFL guy. Uh, Sundays during football season, it's uh, everyone better leave me alone and let me watch my Packers. And, uh, you know, they do really well, and then they uh, disappoint at the end of the season. Yeah. Well, if you think about NFL, because I've watched a bit of NFL in my time, if you think about NFL, you take away all the pads and helmets, and there's a lot more kicking involved, and essentially, besides that, it's kind of the same, sort of. So there's, uh, yeah, so there's no, they, they, they literally wear just a singlet and shorts, uh, oh. but there's still the same kind of body impact that, that uh, you find in the NFL. So, yeah, there's... Uh, it's, it's a brutal game, but, and again, unlike the NFL as well, you can get hit by uh, 360 degrees. They can come and tackle you from anywhere. There, are, There's no, you don't have to sort of run in a particular direction. You just, uh, anybody can come and grab you at any time. So once you get the ball, you'd want to get rid of it pretty quick. That's pretty crazy. Maybe your next, uh, your next uh, um, film can be, uh, you can make a, an AFL type of film, you know, something like uh, Remember the Titans. <laughs> maybe i should maybe i should it uh there's not uh, see, that's a problem with australian cinema though we don't make many films and when we do we don't really make films about australian things like i can't really think of any great australian rules football movies i mean i can think of some fantastic nfl films and basketball right. films and boxing movies but australians we just don't make films full stop and when we do they the about uh, they, they we never tell our own sort of stories and talk about our own kind of culture so you know like australian rules football films i mean there's been some i'll, I'll tell you a, an example right so this is the most amazing story ever so uh i don't know if you recall but back in 2002 there was a terrorist bombing in bali and uh, i believe it was something like 200 people were killed uh, in this terrorist attack in bali and the North Melbourne Football Club were doing their end of season like camp sort of situation. You know, all the players go and they have a week where they just party for a week. And they uh, they were doing it in Bali. And one of the there was a few of the players were caught up in it. None, none of them died, but one of them had severe burns, and they weren't sure if he was going to live or not. And he did live, and he actually came back and actually played a game. Of football he had to have special skins on and all that sort of stuff because obviously his skin couldn't get mm -hmm. exposed but he was uh yeah it, he, he trained back up i mean he was in intensive care for like a few days after being involved in the bali bombings and then you know he, he got himself 
physically ac- active and fit again and was able to start training. And apparently there was like, it, it would take him 45 minutes to just prepare to go out and train because he had to put creams on his arms and legs to because of the burns. And he had to wear special skins, like I said, over and gloves and all that sort of stuff. And he, uh, he trained and uh, he got a game on his merits. The coach didn't hand him a game because that was controversy as well because the coach was like, he'll play in the reserves because he's not at a level yet to play in the senior team. So he finally got his opportunity and he played a game in the seniors of nine months after being involved in the Bali bombings. It's the most amazing story. And why nobody has made a film out of that, I will never know. You know what I mean? Like it's the most yeah. incredible inspirational story uh, but Australians we just don't make films about our culture and our people it's it's bizarre the way we think in here in Australia it's really strange yeah that's absolutely a film that I think a lot of people would watch and then people would research and maybe uh you know you got the AFL fans all over the world <laughs> absolutely absolutely I couldn't agree more uh, we have played uh exhibition games overseas I know that in uh, in America, they've got the G'day USA that they have in uh, Los Angeles every January for a week, like a, a week-long Australian festival in Los Angeles. Okay. And they usually play an exhibition game of Australian rules football there. And they pull a decent crowd. A lot of the Aussies that live over there go and check it out. And, and you know, the, a lot of the, the Americans. Because uh, you guys, when you watch it, I mean, we've got actually, there's a, a famous, uh, there's an American guy actually plays AFL. So he was a, a basketballer. Mason Cox is his name, plays for Collingwood. And he was a basketballer in Dallas, Texas. And there was like, a, he saw somewhere on the internet, there was like a, a, a draft a camp or combine or something like that uh, in Los Angeles. And so I think he might have just got delisted by his college team in Dallas. And so he went over because he's a very good athlete and he's like seven foot, you know, two or something crazy like that. And so he went over and he tried out and he came over to Australia and now he's uh, he's playing in the big leagues over here. Uh, yeah. So, uh, I mean, so th- there are they are starting to sort of branch out and get a bit of interest in the Australian rules football, but not uh, not to my liking. I think they could do it better. Yeah, maybe one day. Who knows? Well, that sounds that sounds pretty interesting. Uh, I definitely will take a deep dive into that. Um, a couple more questions. Uh, any chance that you're gonna dive into some more kind of darker humor in uh, in the future? Is this something you want to explore a little bit more? Uh, you have some, uh, but this was yeah. a little different, like you said before. That's true. That's true. I suppose. I guess the best way with the kidnapping, the best way to describe it would probably be a dark romantic comedy because it is pretty dark. I'll give you. I'll give you that. And I do like that kind of humor as well. I like all kind of comedy, to be honest. So I do like the dark sort of comedy. And yes, absolutely. I uh, I think uh, a bit more uh, a bit more darker humor might uh, might creep its way into a few uh, beer nuts films going forward, perhaps. So you'll have to uh, have to keep an eye out for that. But yeah, I always like to keep it different. You know, keep. I don't, I don't want people going over to the beer nuts productions website and being bored at what they're watching. You know, I want to make right. sure that. I always keep it different and unusual and uh, that the next film is different in some way to the last film so that people uh, keep coming back and keep watching. Absolutely. Well, uh, tell the people how they can watch the kidnapping and where they can uh, stay up to date on all beer nuts productions. Absolutely. So yes, uh, just a beer nuts productions.com is the main website. That's the only place you can download the kidnapping and all of our films. So yeah, this is our 26 films. So you can scroll through and, uh, uh, watch the trailers and see what uh, tickles your fancy, so to speak. And um, yeah, uh, check out The Kidnapping and all of our other films at beernutsproductions.com. And of course, on all the social medias as well, we give updates and all sorts of stuff. So yeah, just uh, Beer Nuts Productions in your Instagram, your Twitter, your uh, your Facebook and all that sort of stuff. And on YouTube as well, because obviously there's a lot of content up on the Beer Nuts Productions YouTube channel that people can enjoy as well. So yeah, just... Uh, just Google Beer Nuts Productions and uh, enjoy the hilarity that we have to offer. Absolutely. Well, Goff, I appreciate you coming on once again, and I look forward to uh, the next project and uh, having you back on as the the most uh, uh, reoccurring guest on the podcast. So well, you, uh, you should deserve a I, trophy. I, I, appre- I appreciate that, Drew, but uh, you, you need to tell the people, of course, uh, <laughs> you said you were drinking a, a, a nice beverage uh, beforehand. What uh, 
what have you been drinking of, of late? Um, that one was just uh, an IPA in that uh, what was left over of uh, a previous episode um, ah. of, uh, of, of Boss Tweed. It was pretty good. Um, but I honestly have not been drinking a ton of beer lately. Um, I went, I did go to a different state uh, last week for a little bit and uh, I dove into some of the local stuff. Um, predominantly IPAs. I did have a couple sours and even a seltzer and they were all very good. Um, but, uh, with, with the newborn, it's, uh, it's difficult for me to uh, get out there and sample, uh, beers. Uh, one just being, I'm just working on saving money, obviously got to reallocate some funds from the beer fund to now the daycare baby diaper funds. And, uh, um, and yeah, and just the time, um, uh, we have taken we have taken uh the baby to a brewery for a little bit and uh we just my wife and I enjoyed one and then we left but uh yeah I, I the beer drinking has been a minimum uh, as of late fair enough well i suppose you do have a reasonable excuse with a, a newborn and whatnot so that's a, that's it's a, it's a acceptable excuse yeah absolutely and uh you know eventually I might have one here and there and I, I enjoy it it's nice to uh you know, be able to enjoy one or two and then move on to the next thing and, and feel great the next morning. Well, that is, that is, that is true. That is true. The, uh, uh, the hangovers aren't, uh, though I must say, I don't get hangovers so much anymore. I just get really tired the next day. I'm like an old man. I yeah. don't get the hangover. I just feel really tired and lethargic. Like, uh, you know, I've just, uh, cause it really messes with my sleep nowadays too. If I have, uh, you know, three or four, I, I can't get a, a good night's sleep. I'm sort of tossing and turning yeah, all night long. Way. But uh, yeah, I can. I, I'll fall asleep, but then I'll only sleep for like an hour or two, and then I'm up, and then I can't. Yes. I can't fall back asleep. It's a. Uh, it's a pain in the ass, and I already have uh, the the baby who, uh, you know, gets me up a couple times a night. So uh, I don't. I don't need the beer. I got the kid. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Well, uh, I also should should also let you know that Anne Hathaway was. Uh, <laughs> I, I offered her the role in the kidnapping uh, to play, you know, Maddie, Courtney Varley, but um, she said that Courtney Varley, she couldn't live up to her standards, so she she declined. Oh, bummer. There's, there's always next time. You'll get her one of these days. Well, well that's that's very true. That's very true. But, um, but yes, no, thank you. <laughs> thank you, as always, Drew, for having me back on the podcast. I do appreciate it, obviously, for your support. And, uh, yeah, just uh, beernutsproductions.com. Awesome. Thanks a lot. Let's see you, man.